Audi's understated Q5 continues its subtle conquest of the premium mid-sized SUV sector. This second generation model is lighter and more likeable, with a more sensible Quattro system, loads of advanced technology and a beautifully practical interior crafted in Audi's own inimitable style. In short, if you can afford it, you'd like one. For some time, Audi has effectively owned the premium part of the mid-sized SUV segment with their Q5 model. This second generation version, though, faces a much tougher task in maintaining that sales superiority. Although, as we're going to find out, it's been well prepared for the challenge. Just as its predecessor was. Now that model, originally introduced back in 2008, established a benchmark for cars of this kind and it eventually found over 1.6 million global customers, with sales continuing to grow throughout its eight-year production run, especially in markets like China, who now buy more Q5s than the whole of Europe and the US combined. Now to keep pace with this kind of demand, Audi has had to do more than just redesign this model second time around. It's also had to create an entire new production plant to build it in San Jose, Chiapa, Mexico. Now that might not please Donald Trump, but the lower production costs of that facility are an important factor in enabling Audi to keep this car competitive in a market sector now demanding luxury segment technology at executive segment prices. A whole variety of premium brands now aim to satisfy this, with cars like uh, Jaguar's F-Pace and the Mercedes GLC having joined the class in recent years, while more recent arrivals include Alfa Romeo Stelvio, uh, the Range Rover Velar, a second generation version of the Volvo XC60 and the Mark III model version of BMW's X3. Now in facing this onslaught, Audi has sent the Q5 to the fitness studio and it's returned leaner, tauter and more athletic, having shed over 90 kilos in comparison with its predecessors, despite the fact it's a slightly bigger car than before. Even more significantly, this car gets a completely new on-demand Quattro with Ultra Technology four-wheel drive system. And that's quite a bit more efficient than the old permanently activated setup. And it's all based around the much more sophisticated MLB Evo platform that's already done wonders for Audi's larger Q7 SUV. Add to that a classier cabin, stronger safety standards, and high-tech media connectivity. And it was clear from the moment this model was launched in early 2017 that there's plenty of potential here. But will all of that be enough for continued sales success? Well, that's what we're going to try and find out. So what's this Q5 like on the move? There is, after all, plenty that's different here. The all-new platform underpinning fresh petrol engines, a revised range of transmissions, a completely different Quattro 4 drive setup for most models, and if you want it, an optional air suspension system. In short, don't be deceived by the mildly evolved looks into believing that things will be much the same as they were before. Uh, mind you, in many ways, uh, more of the same wouldn't be such a terrible thing. After all, there's never been that much fundamentally wrong with the way that previous Q5 models have handled. In fact, Porsche chose to use the first generation version's chassis to underpin their class-leadingly agile Macan SUV model. And it'll be interesting to see what the engineers from Weissach can achieve when they get to grips with this one. It does, after all, use the lighter, stiffer MLB Evo underpinnings that have done so much for Audi's A4 and A5. And it's a platform that contributes significantly to an overall weight reduction, which is roughly comparable to the saving that you make if you were to ask a hefty adult male passenger to get out and walk. Now, as you'd expect, this does make an important difference to the, uh, well, the feeling of agility you get when you're hustling this Q5 round corners at speed. Although, it is still not quite enough to make it the kind of driver's car that models like, well, uh, Jaguar's F-Pace and BMW's X3 can be in this class. Not that there would be much in it if the Ingolstadt engineers had been able to do something about the rather vague steering response that continues to characterise most Audi models, including this one. If you manage to work around this though, it's actually possible to push this car very quickly through a set of bends, should you really want to. The chassis is beautifully balanced with superb traction aided by a torque vectoring system that's able to transfer power to the front wheel that can best use it in hard cornering. 
For enthusiastic progress of that sort, uh, you'll need to make full use of the various options provided by the standard Drive Select Driving Dynamic System. And that's one of those setups that allows you to vary the steering feel, uh, the throttle response and the stability thresholds to suit the way that you want to drive. Gear shift timings are altered too, thanks to the fact that all Q5 models come only with automatic transmission, as well as the usual comfort, dynamic, efficiency, auto and individual drive select modes. There's also now an extra off-road setting that focuses all the electronic systems for off-road use, uh, introduces hill descent control when it's needed and keeps the car permanently in four-wheel drive. That fact's quite pertinent actually because one of the main things that you need to know about the new Quattro with Ultra Technology four-wheel drive system that's now used on all the four-cylinder Q5 variants is that normally it isn't always powering all four wheels. Uh, now that is quite a revolutionary concept for the Ingolstadt brand. With uh, previous Audi Q models, Quattro four-wheel drive had to be a permanent system and that always kept uh, continual traction to all four wheels. Now that's great for peace of mind, but it's bad for running cost efficiency. In this case though, mainstream Q5 derivatives have been given a much more sophisticated version of the kind of on-demand four-wheel drive system that most other brands use. As you'd expect, it's reactive in the way that all such systems are. In other words, drive to all four wheels cuts in when it's required by a loss of traction. Now the difference with uh, Audi's Quattro with Ultra technology system though is that it can also be predictive. So sensors around the car allow the Ultra system to read your driving style. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, you're throwing this car around like a lunatic in the Drive Select System's sporty dynamic setting. Uh, then the system will engage four-wheel drive sooner and for longer. But in contrast, if you're driving along with Drive Select in comfort, the Quattro package is less likely to unnecessarily come into play uh, than it would with a less intelligent on-demand system. Onto engines and transmission and the realisation that there are two quite different packages on offer to Q5 buyers. Now we mentioned that the new ultra on-demand four-wheel drive system is limited to the four-cylinder models. Uh, that setup works with a revised, more efficient version of the seven-speed dual-clutch S-Tronic auto transmission used in the previous Q5 lineup. The prodigious torque though of the V6 variants requires a different approach. Now for these, Audi is stuck with the previous permanent Quattro system and they've paired it with a beefier 8-speed Tiptronic auto box. Let's get to the specifics. Uh, the four-cylinder package comes with 190 PS if you opt for the 2-litre TDI diesel variant we're trying here, or 252 PS if you go for the freshly developed 2-litre TFSI petrol unit uh, that lower mileage Q5 buyers might want to consider. Now, the petrol package is a surprisingly likeable one thanks to its revolutionary combustion technology. So at low speeds, uh, it limits the amount of fuel and air entering the engine, but it can instantaneously restore full acceleration with the prod of your right foot. It can dispatch the 62 miles an hour sprint in just 6.3 seconds en route to 147 miles an hour as you slur effortlessly through the S-Tronic Auto's closely stacked ratios. Most Q5 buyers though will give that petrol variant no more than a passing glance on their way to sign up for the 2 litre TDI diesel variant that we're trying here. Now this unit has a useful 400 newton metres of pulling power and it makes 62 miles an hour in 7.9 seconds, that's a best in class figure on its way to 135 miles an hour. And like its petrol counterpart, it offers a brake towing limit of 2.4 tonnes. As for the 3-litre V6 variants, well, they're both pretty tempting if you can justify their considerably increased running costs. Uh, the 286 PS diesel would be a great choice for regular towers. It's able to generate a massive 620 newton meters of pulling power uh, between 1,500 and 3,000 RPM, exactly where you need it most. Now, prior to the launch of this car, we'd expected that an uprated version of this V6 TDI engine uh, might be fitted to the SQ5 flagship model. Uh, the original SQ5 was, after all, a diesel and it sold very well for that reason. Instead, Audi has chosen to use the V6 TFSI petrol power plant that it developed for its S4 and S5 sporting models. Now in an SQ5 it puts out 500 newton meters of torque and that's enough to enable 62 miles an hour to be reached in just 5.4 seconds en route to an artificially limited 155 miles an hour maximum. 
Enough with engines, let's talk about suspension. Now, as standard ordinary Q5 variants come with the very well-balanced conventional comfort dynamic setup that we've been trying here. Although with sportier S-line trim, there is also the no-cost option of a stiffer S-sport springing for those who are prepared to keep their chiropractor on permanent speed dial. If funds permitted, though, on all mainstream Q5s, we'd want to look at the extra cost adaptive comfort suspension with damping control option. Now, this works through the various settings of the drive select system and it adapts itself to the road you're on and the mood you're in, which is very nice to have because, well, there probably will be instances when you uh, simply don't want the, well, the soft feel of the standard setup. At those times, it'd be nice to be able to click the car into dynamic and feel everything firm up a little. An even more desirable damping option, if you can stretch to it, is the adaptive air suspension. Now, using uh, gas-filled cushions in place of steel coils, this also works through the uh, drive select modes. Uh, in this case, a revised selection of settings that see the off-road option become lift off-road and an extra all-road mode added. This air suspended setup increases brake towing capacity and it will lower the body by 15 mils when you select dynamic or travel at speeds over 74 miles an hour. And it's even more useful on slippery or snowy tracks, raising the body by 25 mils in all road mode and by as much as 45 mils if you select the lift off road setting. Now, in the unlikely event that you were going to regularly use your Q5 for off piste use, we think you'd really need that air suspension package because without it, well this car's capability is as limited as it would be with most other models in this segment. For the record, on standard models there's a ride height of 208mm, an approach angle of 25 degrees, a departure angle of 27 degrees and a ramp angle of 17 degrees. In a navigation equipped Q5 that's been fitted with either adaptive or air suspension, you'll be able to monitor these gradient levels with a tilt angle indicator on the centre dash screen. Which, of course, is something that 99.9% .9 of ordinary owners will never do. For them, of course, what will be important is this car's capability in Surbiton, not in the Serengeti. And for that kind of testing terrain, this model's most notable attribute is exemplary refinement that's aided by a standard acoustic windscreen, but it's probably got most to do with the meticulous way this car's been screwed together. It's all very Audi, just as a Q5 should be. If at first glance you're tempted to conclude that this second generation Q5 is merely a mild evolution of its predecessor, then we would understand. And then we'd ask you to look again. This Mark II model is significantly longer than its predecessor was and slightly taller too. Perhaps more importantly though, it's a leaner, tauter, more sophisticated looking thing. An SUV with a sense of purpose. Uh, some of that is down to the powerful presence created by this large front single frame grille. That's the starting point for crisp bonnet contours that flow up to the windscreen and the A-pillars. Now this bonnet wraps around the outer edges of the wings as do the lower profile wedge-shaped headlights that come fitted with either Xenon, full LED or dynamic matrix LED technology depending on the model and the spec you've chosen. Uh, lower down lie far more aggressive corner air intakes which gain chrome embellishment on top variants like the SQ5. Move in profile, and to those familiar with the previous model, a couple of things will stand out. First, the shape's less boxy than before, and it seems a little more coupe-like. Not only because the roofline begins its gentle descent towards the rear spoiler a little earlier, but also because of the way that this lower window edge curves slightly upwards just before the rear C-pillar. Now there's also this uh, far more prominent upper crease line which begins as a bonnet seam at the corners of the headlights uh, before it sweeps its way back towards the rear below these mirrors that are uh, now mounted on the door shoulders just as they would be on a sports car. A lower down, various surfaces create uh, an interplay of light and shadow and that gives the flanks some shape. And those flanks separate uh, flared wheel arches that house rims that vary in size from 18 to 21 inches. We've got the uh, 19 inches here. 
Now at the back, as before, the tailgate wraps itself around the corner of the car. Uh, that's a typical Audi SUV styling cue. Uh, the rear light clusters remain wedge-shaped, but uh, they now feature more distinctive full LED illumination. And as before, with the previous model, uh, these additional lamps that are built into the bumper assume full lighting functionality when the hatch is raised. A high-level roof spoiler and this lower diffuser section with its integrated exhaust both aim to add a sporty touch. Getting into the front seat, well, that is predictably easy thanks to the raised ride height you get in this kind of SUV. And once inside, what's delivered up is a masterclass of interior quality and ergonomics. There's certainly more cohesive wraparound feel than there was before. Uh, this trim inlay panel can be finished in aluminium, carbon, or even walnut, if you really must. And to your left, the center console area has been visually separated away to give the upper area of the dash more of a floating feel. And small details add to the feeling of quality, uh, like the gear lever that also acts as a hand rest for the infotainment system controller, uh, the touch switches for the three-zone climate control, and the way that the temperature display have been incorporated into the redesigned ventilation system's rotary dials. The cabin's larger too. Audi claims this Q5 to be class leading in terms of shoulder width and elbow room. And you'll absolutely feel that, especially if you come to this car familiar with its predecessor. Now, the brand wants the interior experience of this second generation model to replicate that of an SUV from the next class up. And in many ways, it really does. Every control function works with Swiss watch style precision. And if you've a mind to search for the kind of cheaper materials that many rivals try to consider seal in less obvious areas, well, you'll be searching for a while. Uh, leather upholstery is standard and the reshaped seats position you perfectly in front of a magnesium framed, leather stitched, multifunction three spoke steering wheel through which in a standard model like this one, you view two conventional analog dials separated by the usual information screen. Now as an option, there's the virtual cockpit display that we've seen on other Audi models and that replaces the entire instrument binnacle with a 12.3 inch LCD color monitor that's got a layout that's fully digital and customizable with smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Anything you can't see through the steering wheel will almost certainly be covered by the slimline MMI infotainment display that, well, dominates the top of the dashboard. Uh, a little disappointingly, this doesn't rise out of the fascia in the way that the screen does on the cheaper Audi A3, but in compensation, this thin tablet-style display uh, can now be ordered in touch-sensitive form with neat pinch and swipe functionality, and it can come presented in a classy silver-coloured magnesium frame. As standard, though, it comes in 7-inch size like this one uh, with a matte black frame and includes useful Audi smartphone interface with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity. Now, this allows everything that you access on your handset to be duplicated onto the dashboard screen. Now, if you don't want the thing to get covered with sticky fingerprints, there's voice activation, steering wheel buttons, and of course the usual chrome edged rotary controller in front of the gear stick. A larger 8.3 inch monitor is provided if you opt for the top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch System with its crisp 3D maps and responsive NVIDIA graphics. On to storage space, uh, Audi has forgotten to include an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, but you do get deep door bins, uh, this narrow coin tray to the left of the gear stick, uh, a shallow cubby at the base of the centre stack, oh, and a reasonably sized glove box, though you do have to pay extra for the optional storage pack to get that fitted with the lock, uh, which does seem a bit mean on such an expensive car. Um, the storage pack also gives you this compartment by the driver's knee, and this sliding tray at the top of the lidded central box between the seats. Now the tray covers either twin cup holders or a storage area that features twin USBs and an aux in port. Plus it can wirelessly charge your phone if you paid extra for that option. As for all round visibility, well there are a few restrictions when you're looking rearwards thanks to the thickness of the rear seat pillars but that's pretty normal on a car of this kind and it's compensated for by the standard fitment of all-round parking sensors. Uh, there are no issues with the front view thanks to windscreen pillars that have been carefully chamfered so they don't obscure your vision at T-junctions and roundabouts. 
Now it's time to turn our attention to the rear and start with the option that every Q5 should come with, what Audi calls its rear bench seat plus feature. Now this lets you slide the base back and forth by 12 centimeters to either increase legroom or luggage space and also alter the backrest angle through three stages for greater long distance comfort. Now it is annoying that this functionality costs extra, particularly as it's standard on a much cheaper Volkswagen Tiguan, but at least you do get it. Uh, with the exception of a Land Rover Discovery Sport, no other car in the premium mid-sized SUV segment offers anything like this at all. In terms of interior width, there isn't enough of that to put three child seats side by side, but it ought to be possible to uh, fairly easily accommodate three adults in the back here. But in practice, it isn't that straightforward. Uh, the way the seat's sculpted doesn't help, nor does the way this moulding for this uh, rear ceiling light pinches crucial millimetres of headroom. But the main culprit is this extremely high centre transmission tunnel. Two adults will be very comfortable though, with plenty of room for elbows and legs. Uh, there are no real issues with headroom either, despite that noticeably uh, sloped roof line. Practicalities include ice-fix child seat fastenings on the two outer pews, uh, the provision of digital digital ventilation controls and door pockets that are each large enough for a reasonably sized bottle. I go for the storage pack we mentioned earlier and there are seat back mat pockets uh, plus this centre armrest gets a pair of pop-up cup holders. Now let's take a look at the boot. It's now accessed via a standard powered tailgate, uh, the rising height of which can be tailored to suit your garage ceiling. Plus, you can operate it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you've opted for the extra cost advanced key package. Now, thanks to this second generation model's 34 millimeters of extra body length, it's been possible to increase carriage capacity by 10 liters this time around. So a 550 liter space is now on offer. Now that's enough to match all this model's key premium rivals and it's sufficient for three large suitcases with small bags squeezed in around them. The 1300 uh, millimeter luggage bay width means there's plenty of room for golf clubs too. Now, if you are carrying heavy items, you'll be glad of this relatively low loading sill, the height of which can be dropped at the press of a button by a further 55 millimeters if you've paid extra for the adaptive air suspension system. Uh, a partition net is standard to separate the cargo bay from the rear seat area. And if you've gone for that storage pack, uh, you'll get this left-hand netted storage area, uh, tensioning straps in both cargo sidewalls, and this detachable net that you can stretch across the floor to stop small items from moving around. There isn't really any space to store things like that below the boot floor, despite the fact that no spare wheels probably are standard, uh, which does seem odd given that you do get one on a comparably priced Audi A4 Allroad. Now we always disapprove of that emission on an SUV. If you've gone for the rear bench seat plus package we mentioned earlier, then you'll have the advantage of being able to push the sliding rear bench right forward if necessary. So uh, increasing cargo capacity to as much as 610 litres, which could make all the difference on your next airport run. Now, if you do need more cargo flexibility, then the first option is to make use of the way that this rear bench splits 40-20-40, which means that longer items like skis can be pushed forward into the cabin without disturbing two rear seated occupants. Completely flattening the rear bench frees up 1,550 litres of total storage space. Yes, that is 190 litres less than you get in a rival Jaguar F-Pace, but we expect it to be quite sufficient for the likely needs of most Q5 owners. If you're looking at buying a mid-sized premium SUV like this Q5 and you're expecting to pay less than £35,000 for it, well, you're being a touch unrealistic. Prices for this second generation version actually sit in the 37 to 40,000 pound bracket for the two litre TDI 190 PS diesel variant that the vast majority of buyers choose. The variants depending on your choice between SE, Sport or S-Line trim. In each case, there's the option of paying an 800 pound premium to get the Pokia 252 PS two litre TFSI petrol engine if you want that instead. Want more power? 
Well, there are two options. If your budget can stretch up towards £45,000, there's a 3-litre V6 TDI variant with 286 PS and the kind of performance that characterised the old first-generation SQ5 TDI model that we used to like so much. In the second-generation Q5 lineup, though, that flagship SQ5 variant has switched to petrol power and it now uses a 354 PS 3-litre TFSI V6 that comes with a price tag of just over 51000 all Q5 derivatives come with auto transmission and quattro four-wheel drive. Four-cylinder models get a seven-speed S-Tronic box and the brand's latest ultra-on-demand quattro system. Uh, V6 versions, meanwhile, feature an eight-speed Titronic box and the older permanent quattro setup. In terms of pricing perspective, before we get into rival brand comparisons, we probably need to first clarify this Q5's position in the Audi lineup. So a Q5 costs around £5,000 more than a comparable version of the next model down in the brand's Q lineup, the Q3. Uh, it's probably more relevant though to note that there's very little difference in price between this car and the brand's A4 all-road Avanta State model, which essentially shares all the same technology but presents it in a less SUV UV orientated package. With that said, you will want to know how the Q5's pricing stacks up against uh, premium branded mid-sized SUVs from rival manufacturers too. So let's see. Uh, we're going to use this 2 litre TDI 190 PS diesel model as a comparison benchmark because, as we said, that is the variant that almost all Q5 buyers will be looking at. Now, it isn't coincidental that the budget Audi requires for this derivative is almost exactly the same as you'd need for its two uh, closest Teutonic competitors, BMW's X3 xDrive 20D and the Mercedes GLC 220D. In all three cases, the ownership stats are very similar, so the final decision will really come down to personal preference. The German brands, though, are these days no longer having things all their own way in this segment. Volvo's second generation XC60 offers an appealing alternative choice that'll save you a fraction over a Q5. Uh, so will something like Alfa Romeo Stelvio. In both cases, though, the cars in question struggle to match this Audi's residual values, which could be crucial for business buyers. Now, a better choice in that regard is Jaguar's F-Pace, which in 2-litre diesel, 180 PS, all-wheel drive auto guys, is priced almost identically to a base diesel Q5, though it is slightly less efficient to run. Plus, of course, there are a variety of Land Rover products, uh, though none of them seem quite as precisely directed at this Audi as the F-Pace is. Uh, the model that you would expect would have been groomed for this role, the Range Rover Velar, is certainly very appealing, but it costs nearly £8,000 more than this Audi in comparable uh, D180 all-wheel drive form. <laughs> that is a big difference. Otherwise, if you want something with a Land Rover badge, uh, you'll be looking at TD4 180 versions of the Discovery Sport or the Range Rover Evoque. Now, both would save you a couple of thousand pounds over a diesel Q5, but we think the seven-seat Disco Sport is aimed at a slightly different kind of buyer, while the Evoque is a slightly smaller car that Audi would probably argue is better matched by upper-spec versions of their Q3 model. Now, the same applies to a Lexus NX, although that is an interesting alternative if you prefer the idea of petrol-electric hybrid power to diesel. The top SQ5 version of this Audi, of course, has its own distinct rivals. Uh, this flagship variant used to feature diesel power rather than the V6 petrol unit that Audi's inserted into the second generation model. And if you still like the idea of a black pump fueled high performance mid-sized premium SUV, then we'd point you towards the kind of BMW X3 xDrive 35D model that would save you about £5,000 over the Audi and give you reasonably similar performance. But it's not quite the same kind of package as the one an SQ5 now provides. Now, for that, you've got to look at the Mercedes-AMG GLC 43 4Matic. And that'll save you a couple of thousand over the Audi, and it costs about the same as another close rival, the Porsche Macan S. Now, if you are prepared to sacrifice a bit of efficiency, adding a couple of thousand to an SQ5 budget would buy you uh, a Jaguar F-Pace S with a supercharged 3-litre V6 engine. Uh, as for a comparable Land Rover product, well, there's only the Range Rover Velar R-Dynamic HSE P380, which manages to be slower and thirstier than an SQ5 while costing over £20,000 more. So, not tempting.
Our focus here though is on mainstream Q5 motoring and if you've done your homework and you've looked at a few alternatives, after all that you conclude that it is this Audi that you really want, well then you're going to need to know just how generous the English Nat brand has been when it comes to that standard specification. So. Let's take a look at that now. Now, even entry-level SE spec gives you plenty. Uh, to be specific, you get 18-inch alloy wheels, xenon headlights, aluminium roof rails, uh, LED illumination for the daytime running lights and the rear lamp clusters, keyless entry, an alarm, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, powered tailgate, and Audi Parking System Plus, which gives you front and rear parking sensors. Inside, there's leather upholstery, climate control, uh, heated front seats, an auto dimming rear view mirror, cruise control and a useful removable net partition for the cargo area. Plus there's a drive select system uh, which will allow you to tweak the throttle, the steering and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Now it's true, you don't get satellite navigation with entry-level trim in the way that you would with a rival BMW or Mercedes, but Audi says you don't really need that thanks to the way that the standard MMI Radio Plus infotainment system's included smartphone interface can link into your phone's mapping functionality. Now that interface also hooks you up with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity systems, uh, and that will mean that when you plug your handset uh, into the USB port, then your smartphone smartphone's navigation, its telephone and its music features can all be accessed in car from a separate MMI menu. Uh, you'll also get MMI dashboard screen access to your handset's third-party apps too, so things like Pandora, uh, Spotify and WhatsApp, as well as things like reminders or messaging functions. Now, as you'd expect, the infotainment system integrates Bluetooth phone connectivity, plus you get a 10-speaker, 180-watt Audi sound system, and a DAB tuner. And everything is controllable, either via the provided MMI rotary dial, by voice, uh, through buttons on the multifunction leather stitch steering wheel, or via a 7-inch color touchscreen. Want to progress beyond SE trim? Well, most Q5 customers will, and at the mid-range sport level that we're trying here, you get a few minor exterior embellishments, but the main changes come inside with the addition of sport seats with powered lumbar adjustment, um, an LED interior lighting pack, and an MMI navigation system that will allow you to trial Audi's wide range of Connect infotainment media connectivity features. Now another benefit of having MMI navigation fitted is you'll be able to use more of the functionality of the free Audi MMI Connect app that your Audi Center will encourage you to download onto your smartphone and link into the car. Now, like other similar apps from other brands, uh, this one allows you to do things like uh, locate the car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. And it'll also enable you to plan a route on the app and then upload it into the Q5 before using the app to update yourself on traffic conditions throughout the journey. The Audi MMI Connect app, though, can also now deliver even more than that. Uh, it offers users uh, online media streaming. It allows them to transfer their smartphone's appointment calendar into the car, and it enables them to receive up to 3,000 internet radio stations, too. We were talking about trim levels. Uh, many Q5 bells want to stretch even further up the range and get themselves an S-Line variant. Now here you get a far more dynamic look, courtesy of larger 19-inch wheels, LED headlamps, and an S-Line body styling package that gives you smarter bumpers and an S-Line rear spoiler, as well as changes to the side skirts and the rear diffuser. Plus there are dynamic rear indicators that put on a sweeping light show every time you flick them on. And you'll also be offered the no-cost option of firm sport suspension if you want that. Inside, you get a sport steering wheel, stainless steel pedals, matte brushed aluminium inlays, uh, black perforated leather for the gear knob, illuminated branded door sill trims, uh, rear privacy glass, and embossed sport seats that are leather and alcantara trimmed with contrast stitching. At the top of the range, the SQ5 variant gets firmer S Sport suspension with damper control, plus even bigger 20-inch five twin spoke star wheels, an aluminium trimmed dual branch tailpipe design, and a dynamic S specific body kit. Inside, SQ5 bars are treated to a bespoke S branded cabin featuring extra leather interior trim, a special gear lever, an S branded three spoke steering wheel, uh, S specific instrument dials, and the brand's famous diamond stitched Napa leather trimmed S sports seats. 
Plus, the SQ5 gets the full house MMI Navigation Plus infotainment setup with its larger 8.3-inch screen. And that's something I'll tell you a little bit more about later. Onto the options you can get across the Q5 range. And now the one box we think you really have to tick is that for the rear bench seat plus package, which will enable you to slide or recline the rear bench and fold it in a 40-20-40 split. Uh, the second issue uh, we turn our attention to is that of getting the suspension set up right. And we actually think the standard Comfort Dynamic package is very good. It's certainly much better than the stiffer S Sport suspension that's optional on S-Line trim. Now, if you do want to change things in this regard, though, uh, we'd suggest you go for the Adaptive Damping package. Now, he calls this uh, Adaptive Comfort Suspension with Damping Control. Now, with that fitted, uh, you'll get suspension that can be controlled to suit the way that you want to drive via the various modes of the Drive Select Vehicle Dynamic System. Another extra cost suspension setup that varies with the chosen drive select mode is the adaptive air suspension setup. Now this not only improves the ride quality on tarmac, but also gives your Q5 extra capability off-piste, adding in an extra all-road mode to the Audi drive select system. There are two more optional features that we would unreservedly recommend, and both of them have never previously been available to Q5 customers. Uh, first, there's the optional 12.3-inch virtual cockpit TFT colour instrument display. That's provided to completely replace the instrument binnacle's conventional dials. It's totally configurable, it's very futuristic, and it probably represents this model's biggest showroom talking point. Arguably even cleverer, though, are Audi's cutting-edge Matrix LED headlamps, and that's provided you can avoid their substantial price premium. Uh, these feature a distinctive Q signature design, and they incorporate sensors and an inbuilt camera that detects other road users as well as ambient light in built-up areas. Now, the beams then react by dipping individual LEDs to prevent dazzle while still fully illuminating the remainder of the road. Now, they can even draw from the vehicle's navigation data to anticipate corners and adjust LEDs as you negotiate the bend. It's brilliant. Now, both the virtual cockpit and the matrix lights can be ordered separately, or they can be ordered as part of a light and vision pack that also throws in extended coloured LED interior lighting. Alternatively, there's a vision pack which bundles the virtual cockpit feature up with a head-up display and high beam assist headlamps. Now, these dip themselves in the face of oncoming traffic at night. We should point out that both of the vision packs I just mentioned require you to have first of all signed up for the technology pack that many Q5 files will want to stretch to if budget allows. Now here the most important inclusion is that sophisticated MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch System I mentioned earlier. With this larger 8.3 inch colour touchscreen, uh, 10 gigabyte music hard drive, DVD player and responsive NVIDIA graphics. This setup gives you a crisp 3D map display and a clever personal route assist feature. Now this can learn your regular destinations and store them in the system's memory, associating them with the vehicle's regular park position and time of day. Now the data enables the navigation system to cut in when it needs to, even if you haven't activated it. So uh, let's say, for example, uh, your usual route home is uh, trouble with a snarl up. Now the navigation prompts will inform you and they'll suggest a reroute. And we like that very much. Further technology pack inclusions run to a touch sensitive surface for the MMI rotary controller so you can trace commands with your fingertips. The Audi phone box system that wirelessly charges your smartphone and improves its reception quality via the roof antenna and a three year subscription to the thing that really completes the MMI subject's functionality, namely the Audi Connect connectivity system. Audi Connect is something we really need to tell you a bit more about. Now, even if you don't specify the technology pack we just mentioned, uh, this is a setup you'll get to try for free for the first three months of Q5 ownership, providing you've avoided entry-level trim. Um, it underlines Audi's determination to create in this car class-leading levels of media connectivity, uh, working via an embedded SIM card that's permanently installed in the car and which works on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you do a bit of intercontinental motoring. Now, the setup comes with an LTE data transmission module that establishes high-speed 4G internet free access and creates in the Q5 a Wi-Fi hotspot. It'll also allow you to navigate with images from Google Earth, uh, access a Google points of interest search function with voice control, and use a web radio setup with stations from all around the world. 
Uh, through the Connect system, you can also access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages. And it's also possible to read, write and send text messages and emails. The included online media streaming package uh, will give you access to millions of music tracks. And there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system. Now this uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Plus the setup can deliver parking information, delivering uh, details on parking lots and parking garages almost anywhere you're likely to go. It's motoring in the 21st century. What else? Um, well, if you can't stretch to those advanced matrix headlamps, then S-Line Spec provides more conventional LED headlights that look almost as smart, and they're optionally available with the two lower trim levels. Uh, you might also want to look at the optional dynamic steering system. Uh, now, this alters the steering ratio based on your speed. Uh, to be frank, though, we think that feels a bit artificial, so do try it before you buy it. Uh, we will be more tempted by the parking assistance pack with its 360-degree camera system and parking assist setup that searches for spaces and then steers you into them. And we would definitely want to look at the 19-speaker, 755-watt Bang & Olufsen sound system with its concert hall quality 3D sound. Now, that B&O setup uh, can also be ordered as part of a comfort and sound pack that additionally gives you electric seats and an advanced key keyless entry system, which includes a facility to activate that power-operated tailgate with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Uh, you can order the advanced key package separately if you want to. Other key options include a rear view camera, uh, heated seats in the rear, heat and electric adjustment for the steering wheel, a huge two section panoramic glass roof, uh, power folding door mirrors and rear privacy glass. In terms of the aesthetics, well, if budget allows, you can really go to town. Uh, now, unless you want your Q5 finished in brilliant black or as here in Ibis white, you're going to need to pay extra for the paintwork. And there's a wide choice of metallic finishes, a lovely Daytona grey pearl effect option and a range of Audi exclusive shades if you still can't find anything you like. And of course, there's a selection of alloy wheel designs with rims that vary in size from 18 to 21 inches. Inside, you can specify interior inlays in aluminium, carbon or walnut finishes. Plus, the seats can be fully power adjusted and all trimmed in upgraded Milano leather. And with the sport seats, you can specify even softer Nappa leather or choose a leather Alcantara combination. There's also an enhanced interior upholstery pack, which adds leatherette panels to the lower part of the center console and to the door armrests. As for finishing touches, well, we'd also like the optional flat bottom three spoke leather multifunction steering wheel. And that gives the cockpit a real R8 feel. If practical features are a greater priority for you, then there's a storage pack that gives you netting for the front seat backs, uh, a storage compartment on the driver's side, a lockable glove box, a cup holder in the rear center armrest, plus for the boot, tensioning straps, recessed netted areas, and the luggage net. Now we like the variable head restraints too, which can be altered for tilt and distance as well as for height. And if you've got kids, well, the option of roll up blinds for the rear side windows will definitely appeal. Uh, we'd want the variable foldable boot mat to protect the luggage area too. And as usual, your Audi Center will be able to offer plenty of options for roof bars, roof racks, and carriers for things like skis, snowboards, and bikes. What else? Uh, well, on the TDI model, there's the option of doubling the size of the AdBlue tank from 12 to 24 litres, so you don't have to refill it as frequently. And as you'd expect, there's also the chance to add in a retractable folding tow bar. Plus, we definitely want the collapsible spare wheel that replaces a tyre repair kit, which is otherwise what you'll be stuck with in the event of a puncture. And finally, on the SQ5 flagship variant, you can add in evocative red brake calipers and a stiffer S adaptive air suspension system. And a quattro with sport differential package that shunts torque between the two rear wheels for extra traction when you're cornering quickly. So enough with optional features, let's have a look at safety now. Now there's no driver's knee bag and you do have to pay extra for a hill holder clutch, but otherwise most of the main features you expect are present and correct. And a standard fit highlight on all models is a collision avoidance system that Audi calls Presense City. Now this is one of those setups that constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential vehicle and pedestrian accident hazards. Uh, in this case at speeds of up to 52 miles an hour. Now if it detects one, you'll be warned. If you don't respond, 
can't, or well, perhaps you aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car and it should be able to avoid a collision entirely at speeds of under 24 miles an hour. Now, if you are going faster than that, the Precent City system will dramatically reduce your speed to significantly soften the impending impact. Now, if you do hit something and you panic, a standard multi-collision brake assist system will automatically take over the braking duties to avoid the possibility of skidding and further collisions. If you specify a tow bar, you'll also benefit from a trailer assist system that will restrict towing sway. This car is fundamentally safe too, with key parts of the body structure fashioned from uh, crash-safe, hot-formed, high-strength steel. As you expect, all variants feature twin front side and curtain airbags. Uh, these ones are able to automatically adjust their deployment to suit both passenger seating positions and the type of front collision. Rear side bags are optional. Other basic standard safety features include Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, a tyre pressure loss indicator and a complete roster of electronic acronyms, including the usual electronic assistance for braking, for traction and stability control. There's also a rest recommendation feature that at speeds of over 18 miles an hour monitors your driving for drowsiness and will alert you if necessary to stop for a restorative coffee. And there's an Audi Connect safety and service feature that'll automatically alert the emergency service with your exact GPS location if you're in an accident that has activated the airbags. It's always possible to go further though, and should you want extra peace of mind, uh, your Audi center salesperson will doubtless point you towards the two optional safety packs that are on offer. And they both require you to have previously specified that technology pack we were talking about earlier. We'll start with the Parking Assistance Pack Advanced Package that includes five key features. A cross-traffic assist rear feature alerts you to oncoming cars if you're reversing out of a space. And an exit warning system monitors the rear and side of your Q5 as you get out of it, alerting you if vehicles or cyclists are approaching from behind. Now on the move, Audi Side Assist works as a blind spot monitor, warning you if you're dangerously about to pull up to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Plus there are Audi Presense Basic and Presense Rear features that in the event of an inevitable front or rear impact, optimally prepare the car to best survive it. The other significant combined safety feature option pack you'll be offered on this car is called the Adaptive Cruise Control Plus package. Now this gives you three key extra electronic safety items that really could make the difference between a near miss and a very, very bad day. Now the first of these, as the pack name suggests, is Audi's Adaptive Cruise Control with Stop and Go package. Now that is there to automatically keep your Q5 a set distance behind the car in front on the highway. And it'll warn you if you're too close to another vehicle and it's able to automatically stop you and then start you off again if you come across a tailback. Now an included predictive efficiency assistant uses route data to further tailor that cruise control system's operation. So your Q5 may well know Know about the tailback before you even see it. Very clever. Uh, you may be less familiar with the concept behind this pack's second safety feature, turn assist. So let's say you're uh, turning out of a junction and you haven't seen an oncoming car or bike. Turn assist will automatically apply the brakes and that will prevent the accident. <laughs> if only every car had that feature. The third electronic safety feature in this pack is a rather more familiar one. It's called traffic sign recognition, and that's one of those setups that can picture road signs and display them on the dash for you. There are also two other optional camera-driven safety systems that you can ask your Audi Centre about. Uh, collision Avoidance Assistant helps you in an extreme situation where at speed you've suddenly got to avoid an obstacle to prevent a collision. Now using video camera and radar sensor data, it instantaneously computes what Audi calls an optimal avoidance track, taking into account the distance, the width and the offset of the vehicle ahead. And we'd also like the sound of the traffic jam assistant feature that frees you up in slow to medium speed queues, allowing the car to automatically brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. Yes, really.
Audi reckons that this more powerful second generation Q5 model is 15% greener than its predecessor, as well as being 16% more frugal. Those are significant stats, with the figures considerably aided by the fact that this Mark II model is much leaner than its predecessor, fully 90 kilos lighter than before. Now that is a useful improvement, and it allows uh, this Q5 to match the kind of class-leading curb weight figures that are delivered by rivals like Jaguar's F-Pace and the Mercedes GLC. Uh, both of those cars are being able to tip the scales at just under 1.8 tonnes in their entry-level diesel geysers. As with those two competitors, the weight savings achieved owe much to copious use of aluminium. You'll find the tailgate and the bonnet of this Q5, for example, now fashioned from that stiff, light metal. And another key contributory factor is even more far-reaching in its efficiency impact, uh, the new on-demand Quattro with Ultra technology system. Now it too delivers weight savings, uh, it's nearly four kilos lighter than the old permanent setup. More significant though is the fact that this setup is both predictive and proactive, uh, which will mean that your Q5 will be less likely to stay four-wheel driven in circumstances where that extra traction is not necessary. To get that system, you're going to need one of the four-cylinder models, with your preference almost certainly likely to be uh, for the 2.0-litre TDI 190 PS variant that we're trying here. And this manages 56.5 mpg on the combined cycle, and that's exactly the same as a rival Mercedes GLC 220D and 136 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's nearly 8 miles per gallon and 20 grams per kilometre better than the equivalent version of the first generation Q5 can manage. And that's a pretty impressive improvement given that the engine in use is almost exactly the same. It's also about 3 miles per gallon and 7 grams per kilometre better than you manage in a rival 2 litre diesel Jaguar F-Pace or Land Rover Discovery Sport. And it's enough to make a percentage point saving to your benefit in kind rating too, which for a Q5 2 litre TDI is pitched at 28%, that's 4% lower than than the previous generation model. Bear in mind that as usual, uh, larger wheel rims like those you get with S-Line trim, for example, will make quite an impact on those figures. If you'd rather have the extra power of the three litre V6 TDI variant, uh, you could see economy drop by as much as 30%. Now that may sound a lot, but it is on a par with similarly potent rivals. As for petrol power, well, Audi has engineered a plug-in hybrid variant that'll be your Q5 of choice if you need running cost efficiency but you insist on fueling from the green pump. Uh, this kind of technology is pricey though and it may be difficult to justify, especially in the light of the figures returned by the standard 2-litre TFSI Quattro model. Uh, this certainly returns better readings than you'd expect from a 252 PS petrol-powered SUV that's able to reach 62 miles an hour in just 6.3 seconds. That's thanks to revolutionary combustion technology that at low speeds limits the amount of fuel and air entering the engine, effectively leaving it operating as if its capacity was 1.2 litres. Accelerate hard though and the switch back to full capacity is seamless. As a result, this derivative is able to return 40.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 157 grams per kilometre, which is pretty impressive considering that the performance of that variant isn't very far off that you get from the top SQ5 derivative. For reference, uh, that SQ5 V6 3-litre TFSI model manages 189 grams per kilometre of CO2 and 34 mpg on the combined cycle. Of course, this Audi's strong efficiency showing isn't solely down to reduced weight and its redeveloped Quattro system. Other important factors include a more slippery shape with a class-leadingly sleek 0.30 CD drag factor and an engine stop-start system that cuts in as you coast to a halt rather than waiting until you get to a complete stop. Now that means in traffic the engine is off more often than it would otherwise be. Now both auto gearboxes also include a coasting function that cuts in to disengage the engine at cruising speeds of between 34 and 99 miles an hour and then re-engages it immediately and almost seamlessly when you either accelerate or brake. Uh, that 2-litre TFSI variant also gets a controllable cooling air intake which as you speed up gradually closes the upper air intake to reduce drag. 
Magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures we've quoted can be, well, difficult to achieve in real world motoring, but then that is not an issue exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the English DAT brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel do more when it comes to efficiency. So as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the drive select vehicle dynamic system, and that will tweak the air conditioning, the gear shift timings, and the throttle response for maximum maximum frugality. Going further than that requires use of the optional predictive efficiency assist setup that Audi says could potentially improve your fuel economy by as much as 10%. Now this works with navigation data and the extra cost adaptive cruise control system. How? Well, by analysing any given route once set to decide how the journey could be undertaken more efficiently. I mean, doing this, the speed limits, the traffic signs, the bends and the roundabouts that you'll be encountering along the way are all taken into account. And the setup then offers driving tips which will help you achieve better running cost returns. So, perhaps for example, um, a junction is out of sight around the next bend and you could take your foot off the accelerator a little earlier. Get onto the highway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, predictive efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. So if it knows you're going to be travelling for a few junctions, it'll even use that coasting function I just mentioned to disengage the engine at cruising speeds for greater efficiency. What else? Um, well, one small irritation on the diesel version of this car is that in order to keep weight down, Audi only fits quite a small 12-litre tank for the AdBlue additive that works with the TDI unit's uh, diesel particulate filter and selective catalytic reduction system to remove particles and nitrogen oxides from the exhaust emissions. Now, typically, you'll need to pour some AdBlue in every 8,000 miles with the normal tank, uh, which means that you might end up having to do it yourself. Specify the optional larger 24 litre ad blue tank and all the top ups can be done when the car is in for its regular service. Talking of maintenance, uh, service intervals are every uh, two years or up to 19,000 miles, whichever comes first. Uh, you'll need an oil change after a year or 9,000 miles. And as usual with Audi models, there's a choice of either a fixed or flexible service regime. Uh, the choice between the two depends on the extent of your likely annual mileage. You'll need to change the brake fluid after the first three years and then every two years thereafter for both regimes. And overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at the time of initial purchase. And they can cover you for up to a maximum of five years and 90,000 miles. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect uh, safety and service system app. As well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Or alternatively, you can sign up for Audi service request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable the car to communicate with the dealer. Now, as your Q5 nears the time when work will be needed, uh, the diagnostics alert the nominated local Audi centre, who will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Now, another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your Q5 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems, accompanying the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or your smartphone. That way, you'll know precisely what work you're authorising on the car. Onto the warranty. Now, all cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in that period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend that cover to either four or five years. As for insurance groupings, well, they'll be very comparable to those of the other premium brands in the segment. Uh, the 2-litre TDI diesel variant attracts a rating of Group 29E. Uh, the petrol 2-litre TFSI model, meanwhile, attracts a Group 35E rating, and the top SQ5 is rated a Group 42E. And we'll finish by covering residual values, which, as usual with this English DAT brand, are predicted to be class-leadingly strong, reflective of the unsurpassed build quality on offer here. Independent experts Cat Monitor reckon that after the usual three-year, 60,000-mile period, a 2-litre TDI 190 PS diesel Q5 will cling on to around 50% of its original asking price. Now, in comparison, a comparable Mercedes GLC 220D manages just 46%. 
Go for the two litre TFSI petrol model and you'll find that its 48% retained value figure is also class leading, just shading that of a comparable Jaguar F-Pace two litre turbo. It's a similar story when it comes to pence per mile running costs. Uh, Cap reckons that after three years and 60,000 miles, a Q5 2 litre TDI will cost 42.76 pence per mile to run. That's around two pence per mile less than an equivalent diesel Jaguar F Pace, and more than three pence per mile less than a comparable Mercedes GLC 220D. Now, those kind of figures can really add up if you're covering higher mileages. The Q5 has always been a top seller on merit, and nothing's changed. It's simply very good at almost everything. Now, if, if you want the ultimate driver's car or the ultimate off-roader in this sector, well, no, this isn't it. But is this the best all-rounder in the class? Well, many would say so. There are many reasons why. Cabin quality that sets a fresh segment standard, sharp looks, meticulous build quality, unbeaten efficiency readings, class-leading residual values, cutting-edge safety technology, we could go on and on. Rivals, of course, offer many of these things too, but nobody packages them up quite like Audi. As for the things that set this model apart from its predecessor, well, the lighter weight certainly delivers the promised extra agility, and the new on-demand Quattro with Ultra technology system makes much more sense than the old permanent setup. Plus, the improved media connectivity represents a big step forward, and we think buyers will really like cabin features like the futuristic virtual cockpit instrument display. In summary, whether your destination is Sainsbury's or the annual family skiing trip to Chamonix, it's likely that you'll just feel better about doing it in an Audi Q5. A Jaguar F-Pace might better suit the frustrated racer in you, and a Land Rover product might uh, better suit your inner Ranulph finds. Ultimately, though, it's really hard to escape the conclusion that a Q5 simply does a better job of the whole business of ticking every really important need that you want to meet when you're buying a premium mid-sized SUV. It isn't a car for extremes, but if you're looking for a contender in this segment, it's extremely difficult to ignore.